What happens when a settlement founded on democratic ideals becomes a playground for the wealthy? You get the Hamptons, a place where dogs enjoy hotel-like accommodations and celebrities like Jennifer Lopez, Beyonce, and Anderson Cooper are your regular next-door neighbors. A place where rental owners and renters do not negotiate booking fees, whether it is $20,000 monthly for a small cottage or $500 $50,000 for a beachfront estate. A place where women don't bat an eyelid at paying $60 for a blow dry, $1,000 for a massage, and the men lounge in $100 million homes. This is the captivating history of the Hamptons, from a legacy of old money to the rise of the ultra rich. <laughs> So, the story of the Hamptons, a string of beach towns on the eastern end of Long Island, starts in 1640 through the settlement of Southampton. At that time, Anglo settlers and native tribes were trying to coexist, but unfortunately things were a bit uneasy. After all, there were folks like Lion Gardener who thought they ruled the land, which led to the formation of different communities that shaped the region's identity. Sag Harbor was full of life and bustling with activity at its wharves while East Hampton had these peaceful, serene pastures. But not for long. The American Revolution happened. Oh! And this once peaceful sanctuary became a refuge for people escaping the chaos of war. Speaking of the war, it started a series of turbulent times, dotted with periods of relative ease that plagued the Hamptons henceforth. For instance, in 1796, the Montauk Lighthouse was built, marking the start of a new era. However, when 1871 came, the whaling industry, a big deal in Sag Harbor, started declining. Good times came again with the establishment of the Maidstone Club in 1891 and the arrival of the Long Island Railroad in 1895. But the Spanish-American War of 1898 came... That war with that great nation, Spain. When I get through with Spain, I will have honored my name. It was all about that battleship of Maine. And watered down all that, Montauk's shores became a quarantine zone for soldiers, and some pretty important figures like Theodore Roosevelt and his Rough Riders were right there in the mix. Meanwhile, some ambitious developers like Herbert A. Weeks and Carl Fisher saw the potential in the beautiful countryside. Fisher even had this grand vision of turning Montauk into the Miami Beach of the North. But again, not so fast. The Great Depression came along and kind of messed up those plans. Mother Nature had her say too with a devastating hurricane in 1938 that caused a lot of destruction. Oh, and get this, in 1942 some German spies actually landed off the Amagansett coast. Can you believe it? Lucky for everyone, a coast guardsman caught them before they could cause any real trouble. <laughs> During the 1950s and 1960s, the Hamptons had become a thriving artistic community, with its idyllic landscape serving as a backdrop for creativity to flourish. And how did it all begin? Well, it started with the famous Guildhall Exhibition in 1949. Despite initial hesitations, the exhibition showcased the works of renowned artists like Pollock, Krasner, and Balcom Green, organized by the Art Committee Chairman. Some community members were skeptical of the bohemian activities associated with Guildhall's John Drew Theater, but the creative spirit was unstoppable, just like the nearby waters. Even back in the 1890s, artists had found solace in the beautiful landscape of the Hamptons, using it as a source of inspiration. However, it was during the 1950s and 1960s that the Hamptons truly emerged as a sanctuary and home base for like-minded artists who wanted to explore their avant-garde pursuits outside of the city. 
For these New York artistic geniuses, the Hamptons provided a much needed escape from the demanding city life. Jackson Pollock, Lee Krasner, Miriam Shapiro, and Paul Brach were among the pioneering artists who migrated to the Hamptons in the mid-20th century. The estate of Constantino Nivola and his wife Ruth in the Springs became a gathering place for social events, attracting luminaries like Le Corbusier. Artists like Al Held and Sylvia Stone spent summers near Sag Harbor, and Held's connection to the landscape was evident in his artworks. William and Elaine de Kooning eventually settled in the Springs as well, and the surrounding landscape had a profound influence on de Kooning's iconic women series and his later works. <laughs> The 1970s was when the Hamptons underwent a significant transformation from its bohemian roots to the rise of its luxury era, which many of us are familiar with. The decline of the bohemian spirit that characterized the mid-century Hamptons is perhaps best represented by the story of the Bouvier Beale family in the documentary Grey Gardens. This family was deeply connected to the social elite of the Hamptons, with ties to high society and a long history of wealth and privilege. However, their eccentric behavior and unconventional lifestyle turned them into a symbol of the bohemian characters of a bygone era. Grey Gardens focuses on Edith Ewing Bouvier Beale and her daughter Edith, who lived in a deteriorating Hamptons mansion surrounded by squalor and isolation. The mother-daughter duo was known for their peculiarities and unconventional ways in the documentary and the area itself. They were most prominently associated with Grey Gardens during the 1950s and 1960s when the Hamptons was known as an artist colony and a bohemian sanctuary. The documentary achieved cult status and received critical acclaim for its raw and authentic portrayal of these two women embodying the contrasting elements of the Hamptons' bohemian origins and the excesses of the subsequent luxury era. It offered a captivating glimpse into the cultural and social transformations that elevated the Hamptons from a humble artist colony to a playground for the wealthy and famous. As the late 1970s unfolded, the emergence of disco, the rise of the me decade, and a culture of conspicuous consumption further shaped the social landscape of the Hamptons. These trends accentuated exclusivity, luxury, and hedonism. <laughs> While the Hamptons' transition started well in the 70s, it wasn't until the 80s that the real boom happened. And it all began with a sudden spike in millionaires in New York and the country during President Ronald Reagan's reign. The Hamptons being so close to Manhattan, not forgetting its breathtaking natural beauty and beaches, was the perfect destination for this crop of new money. And developers knew exactly how to make the Hamptons the only neighborhood these millionaires would want to stay. So they started building new, ultra-luxurious homes. So much construction was going on that buildings seemed to come up overnight. Land that used to be potato fields was now play fields for the rich and their broods. As for the not-so-rich locals, well, the taxes and the cost of living had become too high for them, and most left. And these millionaires poured in in droves. Before long, the A-list celebrities followed. Most notable included filmmaker and modern blockbuster pioneer Steven Spielberg and fashion designer Calvin Klein, who purchased multi-million palatial mansions. Kim Basinger, the late Steve Ross, Alec Baldwin, and Jerry Seinfeld also moved into the area. Even socialites like Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, famous for being President John F. Kennedy's wife and later marrying a billionaire, maintained a residence in the Hamptons in the 80s. With the now booming high-class population, there was a demand for social facilities to match. And so, prestigious venues started cropping up, starting with the Maidstone Club, Southampton Beach Club, and Southampton Bath and Tennis Club. 
high-end retail stores, expensive food establishments, and other businesses too set up shop along the main street to provide amenities. It was during this era that the Hamptons acquired a new nickname, Hollywood East. <laughs> The Hamptons modernized so much in the 80s that it was unrecognizable from just 10 years back. And as the 90s rolled along, there was a growing yearning for earlier, much simpler times when the area's main attraction was its natural beauty. More and more people started to appreciate and promote this. In fact, it is this desire for simple, local things that brought on the popular farm-to-table cuisine. Basically, this meant sourcing fresh ingredients locally and sustainably for meals served at restaurants. Safe to say that establishments that did this enjoyed immense success. Aside from food, more interest was paid to restoring and preserving the area's historic structures and buildings. For instance, Guild Hall, a venue for art and performance, was renovated. The same for the Sag Harbor Whaling and Historical Museum, a place that commemorates the town's maritime history. It was also during this wave that a different breed of residents started moving into the Hamptons, attracted by the authenticity of the area and a desire to preserve it. This included a crop of writers, artists, and actors, with the most recognized names including Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward, both established actors, Ross Bleckner, an artist, and playwright Edward Albee. If the 1980s were extravagant, the 2010s were absurdly hedonic. The decade saw an influx of ultra-wealthy individuals drawn by the luxury and exclusiveness of the Hamptons. The new wave was a mix of tech entrepreneurs, investors, and international business people. Popular names include Roman Abramovich, best known as the former owner of the EPL club Chelsea and a close friend of Russian President Vladimir Putin. There was also Chris Hughes, Facebook's co-founder, and Bill Ackman, a billionaire hedge fund manager. Fast forward to the present day, the Hamptons is where you find beachfront mansions that change hands for eye-watering sums surpassing $100 million. Strolling through the streets, you'll see all kinds of high-end designer boutiques, with every car rolling by being a Ferrari, Range Rover, or Maserati. The Hamptons of today is a real-life, opulent paradise. In this extravagant enclave, the inhabitants are unflinchingly accustomed to exorbitant prices. Take, for instance, female clients forking out thousands of dollars for a massage without batting an eyelid. The majority of the houses here are second homes, or if you like vacation retreats for summer weekends. And the residents come in style aboard private jets or helicopters with entourages of assistants, nannies, chefs, and chauffeurs in tow. In fact, the East Hampton Airport, about 13 miles up the Long Island coast from Southampton, witnessed more than 4,200 helicopter landings last summer alone. Now, for those yearning to rub shoulders with the expansive list of billionaires, this is the place to live. However, even a modest oceanfront home here can set you back more than $1 million just for a single summer. As soon as Labor Day rolls along, marking the end of summer, the rich retreat to other upscale destinations like Bermuda, Palm Beach, or Aspen. But while fleeting, their presence leaves a lasting impact on these towns' economies and social fabric. And there you have it, the history of one of the U.S.'s most affluent and famous zip codes. Oh,